five, four, three, two, one. It started early morning on 16th of July, 1945, at a desert test site in New Mexico. It was here the United States exploded the first atomic bomb and sparked a global race for the ultimate weapon. Today it's difficult to imagine that nuclear bombs went off all the time in the 1960s, 70s and 80s. Imagine that over 2,000 nuclear bombs exploded in over 60 different locations all over the world, affecting people, animals and land everywhere. The 29th of August marks the first international day against nuclear tests. It was 19 years ago on that date that the Semipalatinsk test site closed. The Soviet Union conducted over 450 nuclear blasts at the site in what is today Kazakhstan. It did so with scant regard for health and safety. It was an all too familiar story that echoed across the globe and saw the planet become a military playground for perfecting bombs. In the Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands, for example, the whole ecosystem has been completely changed. The flora and fauna look completely different now than it did before the testing, and people are not able to move back there due to the radioactivity. The world witnessed over 2,000 nuclear explosions, but testing screeched to a halt in 1996, the year the Test Ban Treaty opened for signature. It was finally in 1996, uh, with the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, that uh, nuclear testing came to an end. But the treaty hasn't entered into force, which means that the door to nuclear testing remains open. And all this can come back to us if we don't close this door once and for all and put this legal instrument firmly in place, erecting a firm barrier to any further nuclear weapons development. The treaty bans all atomic explosions everywhere on the planet, in the atmosphere, underwater and underground. So it is important because it preserves peace. Before you use a nuclear weapon, you have to test it to see whether it works or not. So this is the first step of preventing the use of nuclear weapons. And it's important to everybody, whether you're an African, a European, or a Latin American, or Asian. As long as you are a human being on this earth, it is important. The treaty not only stops new countries joining the nuclear club, it prevents countries that already have atomic bombs from modernizing and advancing their nuclear arsenal. The nuclear weapons are too many, in too many hands, and they might end up in the hands of terrorists. It's important to close the door to nuclear weapon developments. And the Test Ban Treaty is part and parcel of this program. It closes the door to new nuclear weapon states and it closes the door for the existing ones. Today over 150 countries have fully joined the treaty but it will only enter into force when the remaining nine so-called holdout states ratify. I believe that the treaty will enter into force. It's a matter of time. I think uh, the decision by Indonesia, which is an Annex II state, to commence with the ratification process will, put, will create a momentum, not only in Asia, but I think in other parts of the world. So I'm an optimist, but we need to work hard. Uh, we need not stop until the treaty come into force. Three countries have broken the de facto monitorium and tested nuclear weapons since the treaty opened for signature. India, Pakistan and North Korea. The Chari Mountains of Balochistan saw the predictable but tragic sequel to India's tests. The tests by North Korea in 2006 and 9 were detected by the CTBT's International Monitoring System. It's the verification arm of the treaty to catch out any cheaters detonating an atomic bomb. I think we need to focus on the young people, the youth. They must be the one to understand that 
if we have to preserve this earth, to preserve peace, they must take charge and they must demand and work for the stopping of a nuclear test explosion. This is what democracy looks like! Tell me what democracy looks like. What have we been there is a groundswell of opposition coming from all corners of the globe. The demand, a world free of nuclear weapons.